We were just talking about rusty trombones. And diabetes. You got to polish them real good. Just <laughs> stick them in that wheel, and it'll be a nice, clean trombone before you know it. Wow. Uh, t- heat, everybody. Tuesday I- night, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the other group of assholes that just spew out stuff that doesn't make any sense. But none of us have orange hair. So you know who I'm talking about. Uh, tonight is Tuesday night. That means Between the Rolls live with Murder Hobo Inc. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube channel. If you want to buy cool shirts, somewhere on this page is the address. Nobody cares. Yeah. tinyurl.com rpg swag uh folks uh we're a little short-handed today but not on ideas you have three monumental narrators tonight count them three uh tonight we're going to do a recap on the saturday campaign debacle as well as talk about why some dms are dickheads aka are you going to follow the rules or make shit up as you go along uh we'll start on a uh, high note ish kyle kyle what do you got to say you're dick frank <laughs> this is an intervention <laughs> i can't wait to get started but we have to introduce everyone else first next week we'll be talking about players being assholes uh speaking of assholes blake <laughs> frank is also a dick <laughs> I get zero respect, folks. I'm the Rodney Dangerfield of D&D when all I want to be is the Mel Brooks of D&D. It's just not fair. It is not fair. I blame... Eh. (laughs) Uh, Folks, this past weekend, uh, we returned to the campaign. As you may or may not know, these guys are still fractured fairy tales, and they were trying to get juxtapositioned into where they could uh, meet back up. It, 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 it's juxtaposed. Can we mute his ass? I'm getting really tired. <laughs> well, you know, if you just said the word right, you'd be fine. You know what? Uh, DM prerogative. I'll say it how I want. State of the Union! State of the Union! That's purgative. Thank you very much. (laughs) Very nice. Uh, So which one of you two wants to start with the review, and then we'll finish with the other? To be honest, I wasn't paying attention for any of Blake's stuff. So, Blake, if you want to go over your stuff, but (laughs) I'll go over my stuff. stuff. Oh, okay. It was a bad show, guys. Don't don't go back and watch. I wouldn't watch it. It Yeah, no, no. But we did get to talk over Carol. Yeah, that was great. So yeah, and yeah, yeah, I had a pizza delivered. That was nice. That's that's true. <laughs> and if you uh, <laughs> like watching people get thrown under the bus, that's what that episode was. It, it is called Sojourn into the Southlands, uh, yeah, eh, figuratively sure, yeah. or figuratively or Pythagoreanly. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty much these guys throwing each under the bus on who was to blame when they ran into NPCs. Uh, each one is on a different trek, except for. Lucas and Dewey, a.k.a. Kyle and Ernest. Uh, But the other three are all doing their own thing. Uh, Everybody is trying to get to where they can meet up, and that so far has been uh, hampered by the brilliant DMing of yours truly. I am not going to cut these fuckers any slack. Uh, They have not cut me any slack, so it is payback, bitches. Uh, The truth is that when he's not on the air, he's begging us to do what we can to get our characters back together. Actually, I'm begging. I, I'm emailing masses. A lot of you know me as a Nigerian prince. It's not a million dollars. It's a spot on the show. Please take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kyle, what was your favorite thing about the show? Uh, favorite? Oh, gosh. I was a little disappointed. And I know I'm going the complete opposite of favorite. I was disappointed about the keep and not being able to go inside because of all the phase spiders. I, you could have, candy ass. Hey, there were a lot of them. An endless wave, I believe, is what it was. But, uh, yeah, no, I was really excited about that and the fact that it's like, oh, yeah, no, this place is supposedly haunted. And then you just find out it's teeming with swarm of phase spiders. It's like, oh, this is awesome. This place isn't haunted. We'll be fine. Let's kill everything. And then Ernie ran out on me, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> How close am I to the port calls? <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to get us yeah. to work together. I, uh, he is. That's the, uh, they'll never work together, Frank. This is I've, done. 
It's Never, ended. Ever. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but then I'd have to say the favorite part was uh, uh, calling Terran Perpetua and correcting the centaurs on, you know, what they should actually be looking for. Someone who's not funny and likes to play <laughs> the flout. That was that episode, wasn't it? Yes. yes it was. <laughs> go, go, go ahead and uh, parse that out for the crowd who hasn't seen it yet. Oh, uh, Taryn had encountered a group of minotaurs while traveling with Cola the Halfling. Wow. <laughs> this is like the most I've ever actually remembered anything. Yeah, I don't, some of it's even right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway, the centaurs are looking for a, uh, a midget by the name of Perpetua, who hasn't been seen in quite a while. And they thought it was Cola. Uh, and then Taryn had to get herself out of a little bit of trouble by telling a joke. <clears throat> and despite giving her 30 minutes to find a good one. What she gave us wasn't. <clears throat> no. Karen, uh, Taryn, we know you're watching. This she is. is all about you. She's mm -hmm. always watching. She is yeah. always watching, waiting for her chance to crucify you guys. Always watching. <laughs> Blake. Anyway, she attempted to throw someone under the bus unsuccessfully. And then she watched a true masters do their work later on. <laughs> Taryn has a little bit of explaining to do. She is. <clears throat> she's screwed. <laughs> you know what? Carol, just write up a new character. You're going to need it. <laughs> First level. Blake, what was your favorite and least favorite thing about uh, Sunday's episode? Uh, I actually the face spider uh, encounter was pretty interesting. I thought that, that uh, I, I am curious to see how that finishes playing out because something tells me that we're not done investigating that area, or at least some of us aren't. Uh, so uh, there's some potential there. Uh, the least favorite thing would have to just probably be. My, my, the, the encounter that I had, I didn't really think that it was very worthwhile and it was uh, uh, kind a of goblin. Yeah. Bugbear. Oh, bug bug bear. Bear. It was a bugbear. I did learn, I did learn that the, that the going rate for a bugbear pelt is three grams though. So. <laughs> <laughs> and a cough. Oh, okay. Lay yeah. with me, Perpetua. <laughs> <laughs> so that I may give you the golden fleece. <laughs> yeah. You stay too long, and we're gonna dice roll that shit out. Oh no! I told you I wasn't staying there. As soon as I heard, as soon as I heard the tickle in the throat, I'm like, nope, nope, I'm, 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 I'm piecing out of here. I, I think my favorite thing about that though is going to be: Are you going to arrive at the village at the same time before? or after they leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, because we don't necessarily know that this is all happening at the same time. And you've been going up and down the mountains while Carol's been a beeline in it. No, I've been, I've been along the coast. The mountains. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. But again, the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. I'd really like to fuck these guys over, but I probably won't. I'll just let the dice do it or themselves. So... <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked how you guys were throwing each under the bus. Um, See, I didn't yeah. even get an opportunity to. Disappointing. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Should have been uh, doing that with the bugbear. Yeah. Hey. Oh no, you shouldn't be attacking me. There's this lady bard who. Yeah. <laughs> if you I don't tried attack. talking to him. He, I tried talking. He didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, that's right. The dice giveth and the dice taketh away. But uh, now, uh, for those of you at home who haven't been following us, shame on you. But the next two weekends are Scott's weekends. He is uh, still trying to work out the kinks and the trouble points of his GaryCon offering, which he will be giving, uh, it's April? April or March? Yeah, April or March. If you're going to GaryCon, uh, look up Scott Manette. Uh, he will be doing, uh, I don't even think I know what he's, has he titled it yet? The, the, the return to the hidden veil. That's what we keep. That's what this whole adventure right. is called. So this is our, our return to the return to the hidden veil. 
That's right. So he will be doing the next two weekends with the campaign crew, assuming Chris shows up. Chris <clears> had some uh, technical difficulties the last time. Uh, but you guys all had a good time with that, and Scott's eager to get it done again. So I am looking forward to the break. It should be fun and easy for me. Uh, and I'll even let the producer do her thing rather than botch it up, which I we appreciate it, which I notably do. <clears throat> so let's move on to topic number two, our main topic. Uh, why is the DM a dick or what kind of rule set are we playing? Uh, everybody knows that D&D has a comprehensive set of books detailing minutia. Uh, some would say this is a rule book. Others, like the guy who wrote the first fucking book, would say it's a guideline. Uh, and pretty much every group has their own set of homebrew rules. Uh, you've seen these guys roll crits. You've seen them roll extra dice. Uh, you've seen me go off the rails and just and do nature checks for scientific discovery. Because I, I just don't give a shit. It's <laughs> inconsequential. So I will go off the rails. That is a great <laughs> way. <laughs> well, it was, science, science should be. I don't game. give a shit, but well, you're going to roll investigation because I told you. Magic. Because I am not seeing enough bullshit in chat yet about how I need to read the fucking books. Which, yes, I have read the books once. Have you though? Yes, I actually have. I I, I have all three books. Sitting in the other room, and oh, I have read the cover. First edition, second edition. <laughs> no, actually, I used to know first and second edition like the back of my hand. Uh, fifth edition, eh, I shoot more from the hip. Uh, but if you get a DM like that and you don't like it, like we always say, find another game, save yourself the problem. These guys have no friends, so we'll take a hint. We'll see it, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. <laughs> the problem isn't the DM. The problem is you. <laughs> oh, and the producer's going to be pissed because you did switch <laughs> places. Uh, but I uh, see you can mute him. Just mute him. Uh, what? But, but that's what we're going to talk about because a lot of people ask, is it going to be raw or is it going to be homebrew? So uh, now that Blake's on top, We'll start with him this time. Uh, what, what do you think the positives and or negatives are of Strictly Rules as Written? Uh, strictly Rules as Written, uh, it would give everyone a better understanding of what their capabilities are in any given situation, uh, especially you know, if you're going Rules as Written for your character. Uh, I think that it also encourages a lot of metagaming. Uh, because then you have characters whipping out their uh, monster manuals any chance they get, and it's like, oh no, well this has that can't that can't do that. But this has thirty two hit points. Don't they did seventeen? So I know they got halfway down. Uh, <laughs> That's the truth right there. Yeah. So I think that that does have some negative potential to it, but I I also do have to say I, I like how it, it allows everyone to be able to plan ahead a little bit better. But more importantly than the rules as written, I think it's just consistency across the board is what's more important. Go ahead and elaborate. Uh, you know, if if you got if you just universally agree before you start something that no, I don't necessarily like that, and everyone is on board and everyone is aware of that, don't go back to rules as written after you've homebrewed in a different rule just because it fits the situation better. I think I think your consistency of all along those lines is going to be met with a lot more uh, positive feedback and it's going to make everything a little bit more logical, uh, to seem, seem more fair. Uh, I mean, granted, you know, you can homebrew your monsters as you see fit. That's, that's the DM's prerogative, but I'm talking more along the lines of, well, in this one instance, you could press to digitate a sec, you know, a voice calling from over there, but no, now we're saying press to digitation is, is visual only. Uh, you're going by those kind of on the fly rulings. It's, it, it's easy to mess them up, but I think it can confuse your players and it can get some, lead to some frustration. Fair enough. <clears throat> Kyle, same question. Those Pluses questions. and minuses of uh, ah. written as run is written. Uh, well, at that point, you have a book that 
or a set of rules that everyone at the table has with them. Maybe. Or gets shared with them. <clears throat> Either way, you're all working from the same basic rule set. Now, interpretation is going to be a, a little bit out there, but ideally with whatever rules you have, it's going to limit that. Um, and so, because um, people disagree on everything or how something should be done. And so by saying, okay, have a player's guide, it has all the rules that we're going to be using on there. Um, that way there's no or very few um, misunderstandings at the table. Um, and at that point, yeah, yeah. Um, and really the minuses of that are people who are going to misread or interpret the rules in a different way than um, at the table. But the idea is because you're all looking at the same thing, no one's going to Dungeons and Dragons wiki to figure out the rules for how to do this or do that and come up with something completely different from everyone else. Um, it's a game, a little bit art. It's storytelling, right? Uh, is the idea. Collaborative storytelling. Collaborative storytelling. Sure. Um, uh, and it's art and art is always been open to interpretation. When I hear a song, if Frank listens to it, he's going to come up with something completely different based on his experiences. Uh, and so when we're playing a game that is kind of an art project, having a set of rules that everyone can read really limits the problem of disagreements and misunderstandings. Uh, I agree entirely. I, I, I remember every time I hear smack my bitch up, I'm just taking back to my days of youth along the seashore showing <laughs> yeah and i just imagine beating my mother with a clear what it ain't heroes of philbar folks it's murder hobo inc <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what i really like the interpretation that the game is art uh yeah. because uh We've all I mean, met. you'll have those groups who want to play a war game and roll dice, mm -hmm. but at that point, you still have the rules for that, and at least something that mostly everyone can agree on. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, Frank. Uh, and especially when you're talking about metagamers, because you, uh, you guys also brought that up. Uh, and if that's how you like to play, uh, you know, that's great. I, you know, I, uh, unlike some people out on social media, I'm never going to say the way you play is stupid. Uh, I'll say I don't like it, uh, you know, and, and that's fine. You don't have to like everybody out there. I don't like Critical Role. No offense. It's just not my cup of tea. A lot of people do like it. Good for them. Enjoy it. Uh, have a great time with it. That's not me. That's not how I play. Uh, and it's just a personal note. Uh, with and, and along that line, too, not all metagaming can be bad. It can help expedite some, some things if you all yeah. are in agreement that, okay, we can just shorthand over some of the some of these aspects that right. are, get get to be tedious and that kind of stuff. So once you, okay, no, I know that this is what I need to do, and we're going to get through this, and it's going to make everything a little bit quicker. So it, it can have its potential positive aspects. Right, especially if okay, I know I'm not going yet, but I know what I'm going to do, and I know that it takes 452 dice, Kyle. So I'm just going to start rolling. By the time it's my turn, I'll tell you how much damage I did, and then I'll start rolling the next. Round. I got a dice roller, guys. I got a dice roller. <laughs> I just have to use it. So. <clears throat> but but yeah, the the I, for me the game, and maybe it's just the way I, I got brought up on the game is like Kyle said, more art. Uh, it's role play, R O L E, not R O L L. Uh, either way is fine if you're enjoying it. If you have a group that likes it this way or that, fine, roll with it. I don't care. Uh, we all have our personal aspects. Uh, but for me, the the status of it being an art, especially not in terms of the DM, because all three of us have DM'd, and we all know that it we we have a creative vision. Whether or not the players jump on board with it or not is a crapshoot at best. Uh, but everyone's a critic. That's right. We we all have an idea, and then these guys go that way. Uh, but yeah, I really like uh, 
I, I, I'm right in the middle. I like rules as written because for the reason you guys have presented, it's a nice base. Everybody's on board with this. Da, 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 da. And I think uh, both of both sides of this argument are best served in a session zero. Uh, because if you start your campaign, <clears throat> because all the cast members had their say before we started this little project year, year and a half ago. Well, you had your say. We just thought it was stupid and went over it. <laughs> oh. You know, you had your opportunity. It was the 13 seconds when you were actually in the bathroom. That's right. And you, we couldn't hear you because for some reason you keep the door shut when you're going to the bathroom, which oh I think is rude. Gosh. It was rallies night. I love rallies. <laughs> 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 on the toilet. <laughs> That's why my wife calls it rallies style. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm going to the bathroom. Rally style? <laughs> That's right. Rally style. Oh, yeah, baby. You she know calls the hazmat it. team in. Uh, but yeah, when you do a session zero, uh, as these guys have pointed out, it's best to get your ducks in a row early on that. If you want to play rules as written <clears throat> and everybody agrees, or at least you get a majority that agrees, that's how you're going to go, and you really shouldn't go off the beaten track. Uh, if you choose the other one, which we're going to discuss in a minute, uh, then it gets a lot more complicated. So let's move forward as we zip along, and let's go ahead and discuss uh, freelancing that bitch. We'll start with Kyle. Uh, homebrew rules. What's good? What's bad about them? Uh... <coughs> The they're good to keep the game flowing and to keep your players interested. A lot of your players, if they are not new to the game, if they've been playing for a while now, they're going to want to try and explore other avenues. And honestly, the rules as written isn't going to have rules on that. If you did want to have rules on everything, you can play Pathfinder 3.5 as I'm understood and as I uh, start learning the rule set of that myself. Um, what were we saying? Um, shoot, I had a brain fart there. Oh, oh, um, a rally um, style. Um, rules, rally, thank you. rally style. Rally style? Ra ah, animal style. Uh, that's a different way of pooping, actually, but it's the same rally style crap that you I take. hate this show. I really do. I hate this fucking <laughs> show. <laughs> oh, um, so making up homebrew rules <clears throat> Um, and it's going back because the idea is that you aren't homebrewing the whole system brand spanking new. You're homebrewing or adding or you're either adding or you're tweaking rules to a system that already exists. And sometimes the uh, designers plan the system out exactly as it was because if you change the warlock into a wisdom class base all of a sudden you have all this stuff opens up to them and they can completely destroy the game that you're playing because they combine this and that and this and that so on and so forth um other times you're just adding depth if you're adding new rules um and they don't end up breaking the game you can add more depth which um players who are role-playing are going to be more interested in. An assassin is going to want to have poison to work with if that's some of their thing. They get uh, proficiency in a poisoner's kit. And if you read the DMG, there's only about 10 poisons, 10, 15 poisons listed. Uh, and if you fight a creature that's uh, immune to poison, all that shit goes right out the window because it doesn't matter anymore. And, there's enough monsters immune to that stuff. So adding more poisons that overcome immunities can help uh, bring depth to the game and really get uh, players invested. Depth or out of balance. That's the thing. You get... Well, that's the positive. <laughs> if you homebrew it right, you add depth to your game. If you homebrew it wrong you throw everything out of balance. You have a Mary Sue who is overpowered and outshining the party. And that's not the idea of the game. Good answer. Blake pluses and minuses of the homebrew. Uh, I, I do have to reiterate 
the, the, the point that it has the potential to break a lot of things, uh, uh, it's, but it, especially if you don't do it properly, because uh, I, I'm thinking back to our, like when we were having this discussion towards the very beginning of these episodes, when we were discussing like our, our crit rules, how it was it, it, extreme, you're, you're, you would always kind of complain that fifth edition in general was already player focused. And when you're, when your players are the only ones, you know, okay, now I do 600 fucking damage because I, I max triple my max dice pool and I got a sneak attack and I was able to, you know, also add flanking and all sorts of other things. And meanwhile, this big bad can still only do like max of 30. Uh, that just kind of reiterated some of your frustrations is what it was kind of seeming like. Um, I will also say that one of the other negatives potentially is uh, your characters or your players might think that they can do something or that they should be allowed to do something based on how the rules are written. And if they don't get to do that, it can feel like they got cheated. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's something you, you try and alleviate that by having those discussions before we actually start the game. And that's why, again, I kind of come back to my whole point of consistency is consistency is consistency. Uh, but uh, it, it can make things more engaging and it can also potentially take away from it. I don't, I, I, I do kind of like, the one thing that I always say on here when, well, I say a lot of things on here like cunt and fuck, but, uh, <laughs> I, I was wondering oh, how you were going to actually work that into the discussion tonight. I, I was really, it uh, took you 28 minutes. So, you know, I like, I, Carol wasn't here. I didn't have to talk earlier. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the things that I'm always saying is that what's the, what's the first rule in the book? The DM has final authority. There you go. So uh, if, if you kind of have to decide that on the fly, that something that you don't already have a solution for is not going to be acceptable as written. I don't see that there's anything wrong with changing it on the fly. Just it, it got, again, if you come back to that consistency, as long as that's the way that you're going to uh, play it in the future, or if you don't want to make sure that you have a reason for why that doesn't apply to any of the other scenarios. Um, but overall, I think that when they were writing this, you can't account for absolutely every possible situation, every possible scenario, everything that your players are going to encounter. So there does need to be some room for plasticity and how you interpret it and uh, in order to be able to uh, keep your, keep the storyline cohesive and keep everything kind of together. I think it makes, it, it gives the opportunity to make things a lot more fair just as it can make things seem a little bit more unfair at times too. Well, and let me ask you this because a, I agree with you, but let me go ahead and throw the monkey wrench in since uh, you <clears throat> keep saying fair. How about keeping the players on their heels as a DM? I mean, what, what, so, do, you mean by, what do you mean by that? Well, so <clears throat> most of the things on homebrew rules is, a, you've decided this in advance, everybody's come to the general conclusion, or B, gosh, shit went south, and now we have to make a decision. Uh, what about if, okay, you guys are getting complacent, in, or your players are getting complacent in how they're doing things, and you want to, for lack of a better term, kind of piss them off so that, they get a little bit frustrated, not, not for the sake of pissing them off per se, but for the sake of, okay, they seem to be laser focused. Let's throw a monkey wrench in here as players are apt to do with the DM, uh, changing the rule just to kind of knock them off their game. Example. I was going to say, I still think that that's one of those situations where if that's what you're going to do, you're going to have to be able to justify why that is appropriate in that scenario to your players, because otherwise you do come across as confrontational. 
you're, well, you're uh, a dick. <laughs> yeah, it, but and, and you know, I and I will take that. No, uh, I, I'm curious uh, what you're talking about. So, I, do you okay. have an example specifically? I, I, I actually do, and this came up in in Saturday's game. If you watch it, uh, I had a very different viewpoint of perception versus investigation, uh, and. Ernie did not like my ruling. It, it was evident. Um, and it, it's a little bit difficult. I wasn't trying to be a dick uh, for once. Uh, but for me, and I explained it to these guys later, I, I've read it. I don't like the way they did it. Maybe we should have covered it before the campaign started. But for me, perception is just kind of looking around and noticing stuff. Uh, and investigation is... I want to see something specific. I want to know, you know, is there something that needs to jump out at me? Uh, so, and it's still difficult to explain, uh, but the ruling I made was, uh, well, this should be a perception. Well, it's going to be an investigation. Uh, and it wasn't done to not, it, this time it wasn't done to knock them off uh, kilter. It was just a, a a viewpoint on how I viewed the rule or how I viewed uh, what the rule should be. Granted, it, it should have come up long before then, uh, but anybody who's watched me DM knows that uh, the rule book is just out of here. I'll, I'll do it because, and this is, and this I find is very important. If you trust your DM that they aren't trying to dick you over and they're trying to make some kind of storyline that you guys are not privy to uh, the, and doing something one way would upset the balance of what is perceived to be a good storyline, then the DM should either stick to his guns and okay, this is how we did it or throw the dice, and take your chances. In this case, I threw the dice. There was something going on that it was too early in my opinion for you guys to realize and I knew that investigation was a shittier role. And that's why I chose it. Is it right? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, did I do it anyway? You bet your sweet ass I did. <laughs> so that is my example on, okay, Frank, it's, it's clear that this should be a perception role. So there you go. I, I will take... You just kind of overwrit yourself a little bit with your example and your end thing, but... Oh, well, go ahead. By saying, uh, go, well, go ahead. Be because go ahead. I view perception as you just glancing around, if you happen to know, saying investigation is you really look around, and then you're like, yeah, but I want them to use the shittier role. So it's that. Oh, yeah, I, I cornered you. just you. contradicted yourself, man. Well, I, um, but, but my perception and investigation is solid. Now, could the so. role have gone either way? <laughs> yeah, sure. Should it have gone perception? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I would have preferred to do it. I, I would prefer to do it as investigation anyway, just because if you're actively looking and passive perception's bullshit, okay? When 6E comes out, passive perception needs to hit the fucking highway. That's just stupid. Uh, so I like investigation. Which is something you should mention to your players sooner rather than later because they can make choices to improve that passive. That, that note, how I would handle something like that situation, instead of instead of saying, I want you to do the shittier role, let him have his investigation, but come up with a reason why he has disadvantage. Or let him have his perception, but why he should have disadvantage. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which, whichever one, okay. is, whichever one that they're wanting, come up. I mean, because you can come up with a logical enough reason in any given situation. But no, I'm, I, you can do it, but you're going to do it at disadvantage. If your if your goal is to try to inhibit your players from doing something that don't they're have going them roll to say for that they still have the potential to do, which is what I'm hearing here, because you said that he could have potentially rolled high enough. Oh, he did. As right. a matter of fact, the, right. the actual role was inconsequential. Right. I mean, he did so it. In, those, in those situations, if you're, if you're still giving them the opportunity to achieve it and you don't want them to, if you're not going to just stonewall it, give them a reason why they should have disadvantage. Yeah, he it, and the role specifically was staggered because on the listing, and I'll move it back here, there there were several avenues 
on what could have happened. The role itself was easily achievable. Getting the most out of it was a lot tougher. And it, and the role wasn't there. And I don't think the role I don't think the role would have been there with perception. So maybe it all could have just easily been avoided. Uh, but it comes back to what my view on perception, what my view of investigation roles are. And again, my fault. That should that should be covered before the game starts. Uh, oh, well, but, but more to my point, what, what, what's your thought on my solution to that? I like it, except in some instances, you cannot come up with a... I mean, you could say, well, you're in uh, uneven terrain or... Uh, there, you, you spot something else. There's a strange hawk swooping, so you don't see the silver bracelet on the ground or well, something I, like or, that. Or even just, I, I, I would be much more willing to accept it. I'm going to have to, you can do it, but at a disadvantage because there's something going on that you don't know about. Well, and, and but here's the thing uh, with that, and I agree to a certain extent. My concern is you don't know, you don't need to know, you just need to, I guess, trust the DM that I'm not dicking you over. There's something going on. And if you're going to say, well, I'm going to demand to know this, this is what, you know, you're going to tell me. The answer is going to be no. It's going to be a hard no because, oh, well, here's the thing. The honest prince is lurking in the woods, but he has a, a ring of stealth, da 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 da. So instead of a 14, which we normally see, you're going to need something higher than that. Well, I'm going to look for the prince. You don't know the prince is there. And uh, when you introduce things, it, it's like wow. when you pointed out, they open up the monster manual and it's like, this thing is AC 14 has 47 hit points. I've done 42. I'm going to use one attack on this one. And then I'm going to use the rest of the attacks on the other. Uh, let me, I'll go ahead. Uh, I know I said something a little bit earlier, but as far as an actual answer now, if you don't want your players to know something, don't have them roll. They're going to trust you. Exactly. And if you roll the dice and you say, well, that natural 20 isn't enough, which, which they're going to be very check. confrontational about that. So, um, yeah, But now is a natural 20 on a check automatic success? It is. That's not. rules as that's That's rules not as written. No, the DC, you can make the DC whatever you want. Oh, hold on, I got to get a screenshot. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> that was going to be your next players to know too. something, don't have them roll for it. And, and that's that's exactly what I was trying to mm -hmm. say. If you're giving them the opportunity, if you're still giving them the opportunity to, mm -hmm. you have well, to be you have to be prepared for that for the possibility that they will do something that you weren't planning on them doing or wanting them to do. If you're, if oh, you're you fuckers playing, do that all the time. <laughs> and then if you have... But, but if you're flat out saying, go ahead and roll, I don't think you're going to make it, so it's, I'm not worried about it, don't go into it with that kind of a mindset because yeah. then you're going to make a ruling on the fly that seems unfair at some point. True, unless you want to build tension. No, no, no. Really? No true unless. True. Hmm. Okay. I, I see your I point. suppose you could build tension, but do it with storytelling more than roles. Right. I think well, in that, while you're about to talk to somebody, mm -hmm. we don't know what they're going to do yet, roll for initiative, and all of a sudden the players are like, wait, I'm going to have to kill this guy who just walked up to me and yeah. is slowly opening his coat? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys don't ask that. You guys are like, all right, we're killing this guy. <laughs> and that's one way that, you know, when you want to set the players back, I've enjoyed when you did that because watching uh, 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 another Tamlin. member of the murder yeah. hobo, Tamlin. Tamlin. <laughs> and just, I'm about to do 40 points of damage on this guy. He wants to know where the bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, now, let me I, let me try and clarify one thing on the uh, ambiance, uh, as you will. Uh, I like an old trick where if the party just starts squabbling amongst themselves and nothing's getting done, everybody roll 
a, a check. And that usually brings them right back to the table. Uh, I so counteract that, that with, don't have them roll a check. You roll some dice behind a screen and look down. Just make be, sure you do be, it be, loud be, enough. Be, do, you, do your frank bluff. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I have a shitty bluff. I've got a great seduction <laughs> skill. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, and of no. course, the Frank Bluff. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I, 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 I like it when you guys roll because then it's okay. What are my, what are my additions? What what is this? Do I get a bonus? Da, 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 da. When in reality, it's like you fuckers need to refocus your energies on what you're doing instead of squabbling. Uh, and I it, maybe that's just how I was brought up in this game uh, because my best DM always did that shit to us because we were teenage boys and we had probably ADHD that was undiagnosed and we were a bunch of gyp shits, but he would, he would never roll unless it, it meant something. And that was Mr. Noah's approach. He would always have us do shit to get our heads out of our asses. Um, Maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong, but you know that's uh, that's kind of how I was brought up. So that's kind of why I do that shit to you guys. Uh, because, okay, Blake, you need to uh, roll a d20. Well, what is it going to be? Is it going to be stealth, nature, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now you're focused back on the problem. And I'll just, uh, I don't know, survival. <laughs> just get your head out of your ass and get back in the game. So that's why I do that. Is it right? Eh, maybe. Is it wrong? Eh, maybe. And now we know the secrets. We're not buying that game anymore, Frank. Ah, sure? shit. I don't know what's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> I'm setting them up nicely. But no, I understand your points, and, and I like to hear your viewpoints on that, because I'm pretty sure I didn't handle it as well as I could have. And now I know why. Yeah, no, he's been eating this all weekend long. <laughs> Uh, well, and but you know what? You don't grow as a player or as a DM if you just bury your head in one train of thought. You have to learn, okay, this is how I see it. How do you two see it? Even if you're diametrically opposed to the way I see it, I'm going to try and pick something up from that because that's the only way I'm going to get better. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you have to make a different ruling in that moment, but moving yes. forward, take it into advisement. Yeah. Uh, That's a nice it, segue to the next portion. Go ahead, Kyle. You're up. Uh, rulings on the fly. But I didn't have anything I was going to say about that. I just <laughs> thought it from Blake, and I was like, nice. Like, a, like, a, nice. Like, a, like, an, like an autistic kid at the mall. Ooh, segue, segue. segue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, Blake, would you like to start this off and let Kyle forget what the question is? What's the question? <laughs> yes. The, there really wasn't a question yet. There was just, you brought up rulings on the fly. I okay, <laughs> ruling, ruling on the flies. Uh, okay, let's say there is something that you have not covered. Let's say it is something unexpected because murder hobos just pull shit out of their ass all the time. But it's something you weren't expecting, and it's something maybe you guys had never encountered before. Your group, your players, your DM, none of that. So sometimes you are forced to make a ruling on the fly. Uh, my rule of wrist, Boondock Saints, is uh, keep the game moving. Don't let it bog down. As a consequence of that, I will make mistakes. Uh, but I will keep the, the truck moving forward, barreling towards disaster. Uh, so when you make rulings on the fly, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. It's like, how deep a discussion should you do? I mean, should you just grind the game to a halt and say, okay, uncharted territory, let's go ahead and have a little United Nations pep session here and talk about it, or and how you feel about it as a player and two, how you feel about it as a DM, because when you guys DM, you're, you're trying to keep the fucking cats wrangled and it is hard. So the question's going to be <clears throat> talk it over, make the ruling on the fly and eat it later. Uh, okay. So my thoughts on that, again, bringing back to my, my, head against the wall point here, ruling on the fly, 
Mm-hmm. Use consistency or be able to defend why you're not. Okay. Uh, Got to go with that. Uh, at least to the to the extent that you are able to in that situation, because you know it, it's there's no situation that's so unique that it can't at least be tangentially tied into something that was somehow similar at some point. You're you're not going to all of a sudden now everything is complete opposite world. Uh, so if, if but uh, so make your ruling if a player has a problem with it and you two disagree say we'll go with mine for the time being we can discuss it later if you don't if you if you want to try and convince me if you really want to have a rules lawyer discussion you know pound it out say this is why you know and if it's something that is inconsequential they probably won't even follow up with it if it's something that they really think could have some consequence then maybe what they're trying to say has a little bit more merit than you were probably trying to uh, give it in the first place. Um, and be open <laughs> to the criticism. Well, and I'm, I'm not even necessarily saying criticism. I'm just saying plead your case. Different point, yeah. Yeah, plead your case but more than anything. That's kind of the way I normally approach it. It's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Does that sound fair? Uh, when have you yeah. ever said that? Never. You're a dick. <laughs> I, I did that when you were to go when you when you were to go seduce men on the street. Oh, I was going to do it. Period. <laughs> You're going to get a little taste of your own medication there, babe. <laughs> you guys need to stay together. I'm out. <laughs> but, but, but no, that, that that's that that situation though. You and I have discussed that before. Is a good example of that kind of on the fly. What what am I supposed to do? I'm like, okay. Well, it's four in the morning. I'm going to roll to see if there's even anyone around. Mm-hmm. Like, and and that was the one where Scott stuck you with Revenant and you had to dumb it down. Basically, yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, on the fly. Mm-hmm. Well, and one of the things that was also brought up there was going back to the Nat 20, where it was like, I'm like, no, you, none of you are going to be able to, even a Nat 20, you're not going to be able to identify this thing because no one else could. And I'm like, and I, and I said, I would have knocked that down to 15 if anyone would have had a background that would have given them a reason to, because they were so low level that I, it wouldn't have seemed reasonable for them to have encountered it outside of the, in their, in their backstory, mm-hmm. unless they had had a reason for it. So if someone would have chosen that, I would have given, I would have given it to him, but he didn't have that. So I'm saying, no, you, you are very confident that you have no idea what the fuck this thing is. And, and that is a reasonable explanation. You know, and that's that's how I tried to explain that afterwards, and everyone seemed to agree with that and said that okay, that's that makes. I think I was fun. drunk, and so was Scott. Oh yeah, <laughs> but well, no, that was on that was on a Tuesday. I might have still been drunk. Yeah, prob- probably I was too. If Scott um, was in Mexico, he was drunk. But yeah, but no, uh, I, no, I like that answer. But uh, what what was the second part though? I did I did get a little sidetracked in the second part of the question. Uh, it was changing it on the fly. Uh, and do you, do you want to hash it out now or do you want to discuss it later? And you've pretty much covered the fact that okay. you're yeah, for yeah. a, yeah. yeah, for the sake of keeping things or moving. no B rather. Yeah. Yeah. For the sake of keeping things moving, uh, be judicious when you're making those kind of decisions, you know, don't and, fall over your players. Don't just, huh? Well, no, no, and, and and again, that's why I. If you're if you're unsure, if it's going to be fair, throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Say, well, okay, what do you think about this? Because I'm not sure. You know, don't don't be afraid to admit. Like, honestly, I'm not really sure how I should handle that. Uh, well, it's like, like when you guys use spells that I don't know. Uh, tell me what the fuck this does. I have no clue. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's, and it, that's fine. Yeah, no, just yeah, don't be afraid to admit. That you don't know something, uh, ask for ask for input because there's they'll three you, they'll, books they'll, they'll, and they'll, counting. Yeah, they'll they'll tell you what they're trying to accomplish if you listen, and either you're going to say that that's a possibility or it's not. Good answer, Kyle. What do you think? Make the call on the spot or bring things to a halt. Uh, absolutely avoid bringing things to a halt at all possible. 
uh, one of the things, if you guys are watching and you also happen to watch Saturday games, what you don't see is the chat where we start copying and pasting the rules as written in the book <laughs> into the chat. Did you read what I sent you, Frank? Did you read what I sent you? I just sent you like three pages out of the monster manual. Fucking read them. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just out of chat Chat players guys (laughs) dmg (laughs) it's not always the monster man i don't think it's always the monster manual i've never seen that no it's actually usually the player's guide yeah yeah i I think i've guide 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 not rule book (laughs) (laughs) but it's the dungeon master's rule book no it's the dungeon master's rule book i mean that certainly takes things, takes the players out of the game. If it's something that's being hashed out on the spot. And I think that as a DM, as part of your job as the referee to be like, Hey, stop looking through the books. We're playing a game right now. You want to talk about it later? We'll talk about it later. Or if you're really that stick up the ass about it. Yeah. Make a perception check. Obviously investigation, right? Yeah. I do acrobatics. (laughs) I believe that's a strength thing, so I'd rather do uh, <laughs> athletics. Okay, I don't so stats then, intelligence. So then, Can I do one of those? Go ahead and give me an insight roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's to varying degrees, and you have to make up on the fly whether you are hashing it out then and there. Or if it, what are you talking about, producer? Lady? Get off the phone. We're trying to do a show here. <laughs> Very Kill yourself. Woman. Uh, oh, so for those of you she, that can't hear her, her response was that she's playing with her pussy. That's what I heard, yeah. I like to whisper sweet nothings to my pussy, too. I keep it in the jar in the closet. Okay, see, now she's muted herself, but I can still hear her in the yeah. other room. <laughs> <laughs> you were muttering loudly. <laughs> Fucking Kyle, gonna fucking mute his fucking <laughs> change fucking cameras one more time. Go ahead, keep going. You're on the good level one. of the disruption is whatever you decide to respond with as well, because you, if you're gonna argue against it, you're gonna stop the flow of the game too. And it's really how important is it to the player at this moment, and um, what keeps the game moving. Because if I knock you so far out that you have to go over, pull out a book, flip open to it, and find the exact thing, you're not paying attention to the game. You're not taking an active role in it. And what are you doing then at that point? Now, I think um, sometimes it's necessary. Frank doesn't know everything. He didn't read all three books. He pretended to. I read them. And then lied to our face. He he, he, he (laughs) read them while he was napping. Yeah. But there was, uh, I think there was a discussion earlier that we ended up filling a chat about about, um, on trucing or how a true sight gem would work with uh, Blake's changeling character. And I think those are important things because... See, I read that. (laughs) If you interpret it one way, all of a sudden the changeling DM. becomes a <laughs> lot more powerful than um, a lot of the other characters. Right. And, um, and well, the discrepancy that we were having, I think, was because what what you were finding was was looking at it as a monster instead of a playable character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is where I got the humanoid shape changer. Yeah. Um, and so... Where was I there? Um, in some cases, pulling out the book is a necessary thing in order to try and level a playing field. Uh, but, but in at the same some time, cases, also didn't didn't occur during like that discussion didn't happen during the game necessarily. That was a yeah. We, we 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 as players were having it, but it was resolved outside of game. Correct. Yeah. Um, and For then expeditious there's expeditious purposes. Ideally, there's no disruption to the game, and you just try and keep it flowing. And either if your player is getting really pissy about it or fighting about it, I'm not going to throw Ernie under the bus, but that was Ernie this past Saturday. <laughs> he doesn't watch this show. It doesn't matter. I know. Exactly. I thought about it. I'm like, oh, if Ernie... Nah. I like Carol. Now, when you, when you talk about Carol, 
I'm going to get an email. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, and, and, and I don't want to be too hard on Ernie either, because I, I do, I did echo his sentiments to some. No, extent. no, I'm agreeing with Ernie entirely in that situation. Uh, and that is fair. I'm, I'm you not... shouldn't have made us roll if that's how you wanted to play it, in my opinion. That's, but um, and I'm open to that. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and I just say, as far as rulings on the fly, make your rule, and if someone has something to say about it hear them out for a second and if it makes sense the way they're explaining it how they want to do it let them do it that way uh i mean again i'll pull another one from how many times how many times has dewey said can i get strength instead uh only yeah, exactly <laughs> i mean to be fair the difference between strength and uh dexterity is not very much for dewey it's always but been my interpretation different. about how it is. It's only one point different uh, uh, for Dewey. Um, but when he wanted us to climb a tree with acrobatics, that never made sense to me. Climbing has always been uh, a strength athletics. And I made the point out, and Frank was wobbly on it, and I said, You've well, never hey, fallen out of a tree try? before, have you? <laughs> I would picture a live, dexterous character being able to use acrobatics because i was be thinking hard. dexterity as more you know where to put your hands but in order to pull yourself up the tree you have to use your muscles to do that to be right. fair there was it's a blend of both <laughs> it, yeah it would be a blend of both and i think giving you yeah. the opportunity to use whichever one yeah. is, is a, one of your choice in that situation is perfect. and in that case is you perfect or you use a variant rule that the game designers come up with which is mixing them around you have skill checks and you have um uh, ability scores and so saying well make a wisdom investigation or in this case we made a dexterity athletics um and combining those two made me shut up because i was going to take it um, but then just blending something, you know, for uh, a druid or someone whose character wants to be built around seeing everything, calling for an investigation when they put a seven in that ability score is really going to screw them over. But saying, well, okay, make a wisdom investigation check as opposed. And that's a nice on the fly rule set that you can use that compromises makes everyone happy and then near the end of the game if it did come up as a problem that needed to be talked about either the player or the dm can talk about it then open the table back up for it. i agree yeah but i mean a lot of the time you're not going to go through every goddamn possibility rule in the rule book even during a session zero you're just going to say hey we're going to use this if i see it differently I'm going to do it during the game on the fly or if Screwing you, you over something you differently or if you, the players want to use poison as an assassin, come and talk to me and that way we can build something. Otherwise I don't want to go through every rigmarole rule. Agreed. Well, uh, and, and I would also point out, don't be afraid to also give positive feedback to your DM and your players too. If you, if you are particularly pleased with how something was resolved, don't, don't you, he shouldn't have to take no complaints as uh, approval. Yeah. yeah. Frank, uh, you're uh, a great DM considering you're in my <laughs> bottom three DMs. I've ever <laughs> on, on the air right now. <laughs> Uh, no, and you're absolutely right, and you should also point that out, and you said it, uh, to players. Make sure that your players know that you appreciate them. This is a collaborative effort, and, you know, you don't have to kiss their ass or anything. We love uh, you guys. But, you know, I, I mean, and you guys uh, have taken stances uh, against my opinion, and I respect that, and I, I like the feedback that you've given me, and uh, you guys will be rolling at disadvantage the rest of the fucking game. <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I you like did that. that to me once, I remember. <laughs> yeah, the Koa Toad nearly kicked your ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, folks, oh, you want to say that, Kyle? Well, uh, you're tired and exhausted. You have disadvantage on everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, aren't you the guy who goes... Hey, uh, did, didn't you get imposed disadvantage? Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm a dick. <laughs> when, when the 
old DM forgets. Uh, folks, it's nine o'clock. Let's go ahead and do final thoughts. I think we started with Kyle, so we'll start with Blake. Blake, final thoughts. Consistency uh, is the biggest thing. Just fiber uh, or or an enema, barring that. Uh, folks, I think I've said it before, but bubble gum does take seven years to properly digest. That's a scary, scary thing to learn. I know, especially when you're trying to get it out through your urethra and it just sticks to the sides. Well, no, at that point, it's not typically gummy anymore because the stomach acid has worn, worn down most of the gum, 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 gum fibers. But, well, see, I uh, usually <clears throat> swallow the gum in uh, other foods. You heard it here, that folks. Way, when it goes Kyle's a swallower. <laughs> That's right. Oh, like, oh, like, like how you can put Clorox around bubble gum and swallow it for when you want to give yourself a, a diverticulitis. That's okay. There you go. Consistency. Uh, consistency. 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 Kyle, <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, um, use the rules that is written as a guideline. It's the player's guide. It's the dungeon's master's guide. And if a problem comes up, rule it on the fly and talk about it later. Duh. I can't top either one of those two answers. I'm not even going to try, folks. That's because uh, we're amazing DMs. We've it's because I let you go role first. Role models. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't say it was you frank uh, obviously not <laughs> uh folks uh we appreciate your time we hope you enjoyed it if you have a special topic that you'd like for us to discuss and give our feedback on uh because we'd we, love to ignore it which yeah <laughs> go yeah. ahead and write we're, it down we, and throw it we, away we in the say that we're watching chat right now <laughs> oh yeah whoops oh hey we had someone who was uh, watching for a second there yeah well, they left at rally style it says I wonder why. <laughs> Was it your wife? <laughs> oh, geez. No, she's like, oh, I better go get ready for later. <laughs> Rally style. Uh, but folks, if you want to be on the show, uh, be it the game or the talk show, go ahead and let us know. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us. Uh, take a look at our YouTube channel. If you want to buy cool shit, go ahead. If you don't, uh, no, no pressure. Zero pressure. Don't care. Don't buy it. Don't want it. Whatever. No dice giveaway to announce uh, this week, although we do have a couple of cool new ones coming out. Uh, this Saturday and next Saturday are both going to be specialty games, so no can get you in there. Scott will be doing his Gary Con. These two will be there. Carol, Chris, uh, Ernest. And Ernest will be there. Uh, so tune in for that, especially if you're going to Gary Con. Cheat. It's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Another talk show next Tuesday. If you want to get in on that, great. Uh, if not, eh, watch us anyway. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on Saturday. We Bye. won't actually see you, though. That's creepy. I'm yeah, watching. I I'm an Unless, IT of course, guy. Blake is on his phone again, in which case, yeah, he might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared right now. <laughs>